Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome back to Rick's Megazord Madness here at the Onyx Tavern. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, and today we're going to be covering the South Bracket here in the Megazord Madness Tournament. But before we actually get into that, I do need to go ahead and mention something to you guys. Clarify, disclaimer, however you want to go ahead and put it. Yes, I am fully aware that Megazord Madness is actually in the second round of voting, and in a couple of days we'll be going into the third round of voting. Now, unfortunately, due to my schedule, I'm just not able to go ahead and get these videos out within a timely fashion, and I do apologize for that. But unfortunately, with the way things are going, um, it's more about getting the videos done as opposed to getting them out within a timely fashion. So I apologize uh, to all you guys for that. That being said, I have not actually gone to Megazord Madness to see who is in the second round of voting. So when I actually give you guys my choices right here, I'm not being influenced by anything that's actually happening in the polls right now. It's basically like if it was a presidential election and I'd been under a rock for the entire time and didn't know who was voting for until after it was done and I voted for the person who may have lost or who may have won. I don't know. The point of the whole thing is for me to give you guys my opinions on who I think is going to go ahead win because general public we're going to go ahead and do that anyway with the actual megazord madness but it's my channel it's my video so i'm going to go ahead and tell you guys who i want to go ahead and pick and you know if i go ahead and pick somebody that is not actually in the running anymore or is getting eliminated or is about to be eliminated uh, please don't criticize me in the comments based on that because again i'm telling you up front i'm not checking i'm just telling you guys what i feel based on my opinions here if your opinions differ great tell me what your opinions are but don't get on me too much just because you know hey they lost out why aren't you looking at that don't you know that that's again completely not the point here but nevertheless i just want to go ahead and make sure you guys fully understood that going in that once we get down, down round two, three, whatever, yes, I may be behind the curve and all that, but it's still a fun exercise, and I just want to give you guys what my final five Zords would be uh, outside of any other opinion, basically. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the South Bracket. And with the South Bracket, uh, for those of you following along at home, this is the bottom part of the Pentagon, and of course, that was the easiest for me in which to name. So, here we go. Our first matchup is going to be between the Dino Charge Stegozord and Zeo's Oryx Zord. Now, a couple of things about this matchup. Yes, I do like the Stegozord. I would actually have to go ahead and say of, of the basic Dino Charge Zords, or not the T-Rex or the Brachiozord or anything like that, it is probably one of my favorites because it is attached to one of my favorite Rangers in both the Sentai and in the Power Rangers. So, Stegozord is pretty cool, but by itself, it's not that interesting of a Zord, if you guys get what I'm saying. There are far more interesting Zords out there. The Parazord and Raptorzord are two examples. And given the competition that it's actually going up against, I find it hard to actually pick this over Auric. Now, as we've talked about before, I did go ahead and choose Lightning Cruiser in the previous bracket because, well, Lightning Cruiser is awesome, and I hope I don't have to bring up the Donald Trump and the Hamster example again. But, Despite the fact that Auric is not a Zord, there's just a lot of cool stuff about Auric. Um, whether it is, you know, Auric as a character, Auric as a tool, the key that comes with him, or just how awesome he is. I mean, uh, he's not up to par, say, with Ninja or something like that, but he's kind of in the same vein, the same mold as that. Or at least that was the impression that I had as a child that Auric was basically the next ninja. -or. And yes, it's kind of odd that, you know, the way he exits the series is kind of like, uh, did he just get scared away is kind of what happened. But honestly, if I had to go ahead and compare the Stegozord and Auric without having to put the fact that there are Zords in there, what did I just like better? Uh, it's kind of a toss up, but, you know, I'm going to go with Auric in this round. Probably based on the nostalgia factor alone, um, or part of it anyway, because I do have more fond memories of, of Orc than I do the Stegozord. And again, the Stegozord is just kind of basic, and, and that's kind of the biggest criticism I have against it, is it is rather basic. Um, but again, in this particular matchup, I'm going to go with Oric from Zeo. In the next matchup, we have the Mighty Morphin Falcon Zord versus Super Mega Forces Ninja Zord. Um, okay, let's get this out of the way with the Super Mega Force. I still think all the Zords pretty much suck. There are a couple of exceptions in there. And the fact that they basically took something that was in the Sentai, an extension of a sentient character in a very popular Sentai, and in Power Rangers basically took it and turned something that was non-sentient into something that 
may or not be sentient that has absolutely no relation to the original construct. I mean, because remember, the original in Ninja Storm was called the Mini Zord, and now it's called the Ninja Zord for Super Mega Force. And of course, it comes out of absolutely nowhere. Um, and frankly, whether it's the Sentai or the American version, I don't particularly like the design. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of, of, of what it looks like. I'm not a big fan of what it does. It's just, it's kind of underwhelming to me. On, on the flip side, we have, of course, the Falcon Zord. And, you know, I was first introduced to the Falcon Zord through the movie. Um, you know, as bad as you guys want to say the CGI was in that movie, I do think it was kind of awesome. It was one of the better Zords in there. And the fact that, you know, it comes in shooting missiles and then it comes back after being damaged. And then that new formation where it folds its wings. I mean, that was freaking awesome, guys. That's where you cheer in the theater for something awesome happening. And even when he comes and basically saves the other Rangers by flying, away that was cool too but if I do limit my options to just what's in the television so show heck the Falcon Zord was pretty cool there too it was basically the same thing it wasn't that much different except the missiles didn't come out of the wings it just came out of the tips and all that and it was one of my favorite toys as a kid to go ahead and play with because it was the freaking Falcon Zord so you know ba based on how awesome one is and just how terrible the other one is I'm gonna go with the Falcon Zord here and you guys can uh, get me on nostalgia factor alone but you know again this is all my opinion and this is what I like I like the Falcon Zord in this matchup all right next we have the mystic force mystic lion versus the RPM croc carrier the mystic lion is one of those unusual swords from mystic force that I can't always wrap my head around because even watching the Sentai and, even, and watching the American version, I don't understand what it is exactly. Uh, because, okay, I get what happens with the other Rangers when they go into their Titan forms, is that they become the giant robots through magic. Okay, I get that. And then, when, of course, the Red Ranger turns into the Firebird Phoenix uh, in his mystic magic uh, or ultimate form. I'm spa spacing on the name right now. Apologize for that. I get it. He turns into a giant Firebird. Okay. But what exactly happens when the Mystic Rangers form into this lion? Um, who's in charge? Who's piloting it? Is it basically, is our Green Ranger in charge? Uh, do they form a collective consciousness like the Borg and they're all controlling it in some fashion? Or is there a new entity that is actually formed through the combination of these four people's you know, minds and souls and bodies, if you were? What is it exactly? I'm, I'm, I never get an answer about that. Uh, and, and nobody seems to really care, it seems. I always got, every time I always ask that Ranger board, I always got criticism and, and jokes and all that. But I don't know what it is, but it's a giant lion. You know, it's pretty cool. That's It's not that bad. Uh, as far as the toy was concerned, it was pretty basic. I didn't really, you know, love or hate it. It was just kind of like, eh, whatever. And when we get to the Croc Carrier... Now, I liked it in uh, Go Andre. I liked how it formed uh, the Megazord over there. Um, I liked the personality that it had. Um, but when we talk about the Power Ranger version, it's devoid of any uh, personality, and it's it's just there. That's the weird thing. Is like it, There's nothing special about it. It's nothing unique. It's just another Zord to have another Zord. Um, and it's even kind of weird, the, the, the formation that it has. Uh, you know, because like, what happens, you know, you'll have the sh soul chips come out, and like the Black Ranger has the front of it, and the Green Ranger has the back end of it coming out, and then it has to kind of combine in this little uh, sequence that it has. You guys know what I'm talking about, of course. Um... It's just a real odd thing to go to go ahead and see, and again, it it lacks anything special. It's not particularly interesting um, within the Power Rangers context. Not to mention, for some odd reason, they decide to take its uh, Japanese name, which is Carry Gator, which is pretty interesting, um, to Croc Carrier. Forgetting the fact that crocodiles and alligators are two different animals. I'm sorry, that's just a pet peeve of mine where, yes, I can see you getting away with some of uh, the changes, you know, in, in some of the, some of the shows. I'm like, I, I, I will defend the fact that they renamed the Pegasus from Die Ranger into the Unicorn Thunderzord for Power Rangers because, frankly, it looks more like a Pegasus than it does a Unicorn. It still bothers me, but I'm willing to go ahead and defend it. But when you do so many extensive changes in RPM to change it from having interesting personality and an alligator to a crocodile, which is 
a mindless automaton, you lose something in that translation uh, on multiple levels. So I can't see myself picking the croc carrier over the lion, which is essentially our four rangers merged into one. Um, again, it, it's just not very interesting, and I'm going to go with the lion mystic zord in this uh, round. Okay, the next one is the Time Force Time Shadow against the Jungle Fury Wolf Zord. Uh, time Shadow has a lot of the things that I like. It can travel through time. Uh, doesn't it can travel through time? It can fly, shoots lasers, has a robot form, and of course, it has a cloaking device, which is probably the most advantageous device that you can go ahead and use for any Zord. It makes you wonder why the Rangers don't use it more, because as I recall, the Time Shadow used it in its first appearance, but in subsequent appearances, it never did. And you would think, hmm, to gain a tactical advantage, what should I go ahead and do? Maybe turn invisible would help, but uh, no, the rangers never think about doing that outside its initial appearance, and it wasn't even the rangers who were doing it, uh, it was Alex who was controlling it from the future. So Alex knows about tactical advantage, but not the, not the modern day Power Rangers. So I don't think I have to say too much about the time shout, it's pretty cool Zord. Jungle Fury Wolf Zord, it is also cool. Um, it's a construct that is made from RJ's spirit, his chi, uh, whatever it is you want to go ahead and call it. And I always like in, in both Jungle Fairy and Geeky Rager where it's kind of like this aura that's attacking as a bestial animal. And then, of course, you can actually turn it into a physical form and becomes a Zord. I like the crescent tail that it uses and the blade attack. I like how it's used in the Megazord, the Geeky Toja form, uh, to do like a kickboxing slash thing. I, I think that's pretty cool. But if I was to evaluate it by itself against the Time Shadow and all the stuff I just mentioned, Time Shadow is just a superior Zord in every conceivable way. Uh, again, it can fly, has a cloaking device, can turn to a Megazord, none of the things that the Wolf Zord can go ahead and do. So while in other instances I may go ahead and pick the Wolf Zord, I think going up against the Time Shadow, Time Shadow is an obvious winner here. Next, we have Lightspeed Rescue's Pyro Rescue 1 against the Mighty Morphin Sabertooth Tiger Dinozord. Um, okay, Sabertooth Tiger Dinozord. It's awesome. It's a giant Sabertooth Tiger that can run really fast, has a laser cannon, and can jump up and maul at people. And of course, it's piloted by one of my favorite Rangers ever, Trini. So, yeah, nothing more I need to go ahead and say about that. And when you go to the Pyro Rescue 1, yeah, hey, Carter is one of my favorite Red Rangers out there, so nothing against that, but when you actually look at it, first of all, it's Pyro Rescue. It's supposed to be based off of Fire Truck. Yet, it doesn't have water cannons. Most Zords are based off fire trucks and Power Rangers do have water cannons on them. You know, we, we've seen this uh, in Turbo Car Ranger. We saw this later on in Operation Overdrive Bulkanger that you had fire trucks that shoot water. This is the only fire truck in history of Power Rangers and Sentai that I can think of that doesn't shoot water. Now, it makes up for that by having these ladder arms, which technically, I guess you can go ahead and say, yeah, real fire trucks don't have hoses, and they have ladders on them, and you connect the hoses to the hydrants, and I get all that. But as a Zord, all it does is it has these arms that come up and punch and can, can be used as ladders. Well, in a combat situation outside of a rescue situation, which, yes, I know Lightspeed Rescue and GoGo5 both did, uh, how, how often did they actually use that ability? Not very often. The Zord itself is great for rescue situations, but in, in terms of combat, they always go into the Megazord form. So Pyro Rescue 1 by itself, just having that ability to punch, that's not very impressive. That's not very interesting, and I don't see myself picking that over the Sabertooth Tiger Dino Zord Based on that's all they can really do. It's just a fire truck that can punch people as opposed to a saber-toothed tiger with a cannon on its tail. So, yeah, and again, this people going to knock me for saying, well, you're too much in love with the Mighty Morphin era and you're too much in love with Trini. And while that may be true, i got to pick the saber-toothed tiger objectively in this and, and not just for anything nostalgic. All right, next, Super Mega Forces, Super Mega, Super Mega... Skyship, whatever it is. It's got a dumb name. What I mean, Skyship, okay, whatever and stuff, but whatever. Uh, and the Jungle Fury Penguin Zord. Penguin Zord is, is kind of cute. It's got the little heart the thing on it. It's got the earphones, and it's got a surfboard, you know? But beyond that, that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything that interesting. I mean, 
uh, I, I think Scorpion turned into a penguin in MK3 was a lot more interesting than this penguin. Uh, at least Scorpion had, uh, you know, exploding eggs. All this one has is a surfboard. Now, comparing that to the Skyship, it's not really that interesting either. And to be honest, in Gokaiger, it wasn't that interesting either. The ship by itself is just a flying pirate ship that could ram into things and has cannons on the side, but that's that's about it. I mean, f to be honest, most of these, both of these Zords are very underwhelming. I'm not seeing much interest in, in either of them, but if I had to go ahead and pick one over the other, mm, the flying pirate ship over the penguin is probably the better choice, and you know what? I like Zords that can, can fly, and yes, the penguin can fly, but there is something about a flying pirate ship. It kind of reminds me of Peter Pan, to be quite honest, and uh, nothing particularly wrong with that. So, out of two underwhelming Zords, I'm going to have to pick the one that's least underwhelming, I guess. So, in this particular round, I'm going to go with the Skyship over the Penguin Zord. Okay, next one, we have the Power Rangers in Space Delta Mega Ship versus Lost Galaxy's Toro Zord. Delta Mega Ship, very awesome Zord. I love the design. It is in this triangular shape. Uh, has a Megazord form. It's got Gatling guns. It's actually pretty basic when you think about it, and it doesn't really need uh, a lot of cool things to make it a cool Zord. Uh, the the fact that it's a spaceship that has a Megazord mode. That again, what the Gatling hands. It's very reminiscent of the Dragon Zord, uh, and it is pretty basic, pretty simple, which is something we really do see in a lot of the uh, in space Zords. Is that they are rather simplistic and that's in a good way, as opposed to, say, simplistic of the Galaxy Line Zords. And, you know, the Toro Zord is not technically part one of the Galaxy Zords because Magna Defender is wholly separate from the Galaxy Rangers, although he may, of course, have connections to whatever happened 3,000 years ago. I mean, we know he has connections, but my point is, you know, he may have tenuous connections to the power source. Nevertheless, I mean, the Toro Zord does, you know, it's a it's a sentient bull Zord. It does have the ability to turn uh, its owner into a giant. I assume that's an ability that it has, uh, you know, for other people that if it wanted, it could shoot Maya and turn her into a giant, or it can shoot, Le uh, shoot Leo and turn him into a giant. Uh, I, I'm assuming that's a power that it has. And I would also assume it has the ability to shrink those people, which, um, Again, these would be advantageous powers to use in battle, but they didn't seem to be used. Uh, Toro Zord is a pretty decent design. Um, it's got the double, the, the, that double blade weapon. Um, even cooler one has the axe, but again, that's only in the Sentai. That's not in Power Rangers. And of course, it does have that great heroic scene at the end uh, when it's destroyed by trying to hold open the wormhole. So it is pretty cool. But if I had to go ahead and pick between the two, I'm going to pick the Delta Mega Ship in this particular round. There is something about the Space Zords that, again, despite how basic and simple they are, they are still pretty cool. There is a very, um, I, I don't know what the word is you would have for it. It's not sleek like the Enterprise. It's dirty like the Millennium Falcon is the best way to uh, describe the, the Delta Mega Ship. And, and really, again, all the Space Zords. And there is something about that that is pretty cool, pretty enduring. So... I'm definitely going to have to go with the Delta Mega ship here. Okay, next round, we have the Mighty Morphin Red Dragon Thunder Zord against the Turbo Robo Racer. Uh, Robo Racer in itself is a pretty cool Zord. Uh, you know, it's a police car, changed to a robot, has a gun, a pair of handcuffs, a shield, and a sword, uh, and is piloted by the Blue Centurion. Um, pretty simple, not, not too much to it. But I will fault it that it doesn't actually combine with the other Turbo Zords. That's something that always did kind of bother me within the series. Um, and again, that's probably by design and Car Rangers part. But, you know, it was just kind of disappointing that you could never actually combine it to anything that was, you know, all by itself. On the other hand, the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. Do I really need to go too much into this? Okay, it's a Chinese dragon, flies, shoots fire, turns into robot mode, which has this awesome staff weapon. He can actually put it on the ground, spin on it, uh, kick enemies off, and he can destroy enemies by literally blowing them away um, and uses it to, I mean, it's so powerful that it can lift it and Tor and the Thunder Zord Assault Team and the Tiger Zord in order to do the ultimate splatter fest uh, on the monster. Um, it's just a it's just a cool Zord. I, again, I really don't think I need to go into too much explanation as to why it's so awesome, but uh, 
yeah, Red Dragon Thunder Zord easily wins this round against the Robo Racer. Okay, going into the second round, we have Orc versus the Falcon Zord. And um, I'm going to go with Falcon Zord on this one because of all the, the things I've said about Orc and all that, when compared to the Falcon Zord, I just think the Falcon Zord is certainly more iconic. And maybe that has something to do with the fact that, one, it was definitely uh, it was in the it was in the first film. It was associated with Tommy as one of his Zords. Um and again, it combines with both the Ninja Megazord and the Shogun Megazord. Um, it's just more iconic. It's a lot more interesting as this Falcon that comes out of the sun to save people. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick Falcon Zord over Orc. Pretty simple decision there. Next round, uh, Mystic Force Line against the Time Shadow. I think in this particular round, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Time Shadow because... While the Mystic Lion does have all those, uh, it's interesting, to say the least, it's just a lion robot. That's pretty much what it is. Once it becomes the Manticore Megazord, it's a lot more interesting. But the Time Shadow in of itself is awesome. Again, cloaking device, lasers, and flies. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the Time Shadow over the Mystic Force Lion. In our next round, the Sabertooth Tiger Dinozord versus the Super Mega Force Sky Ship. So, um, Sabertooth versus Skyship, do you have to ask? <laughs> yes, it is the Sabertooth Tiger, because again, the Skyship I felt was underwhelming, I picked it out of the other underwhelming Zord, and I just love the Sabertooth Tiger Zord, you know, it's, again, like the Falcon Zord, it is iconic, maybe because we saw it everywhere for the time that it came out, um, and it's associated with training, and again, that's nostalgia for me and all that, but... Honestly, between the Sabretooth and the Skyship, I gotta go with the Sabretooth in this. I just wouldn't feel right if I went for the Skyship here. And then we have the Delta Mega Ship against the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. It's kind of a tough one, to, to, to be honest. I like both of them, but there is just something elegant about the design of the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. It's both terrifying and cool at the same time. The music emphasizes that when it's in the show, the lighting that they use in it. Um, it's just awesome. Red Dragon Thunder Zord, no doubt, against Delta Megaship. Next round, we have the Falcon Zord against the Time Shadow. Now, I, I think in this one... Despite how iconic it is, you know, the Time Shadow is just a better piece of technology, probably because it is from the future. And you can debate mysticism versus technology here, but I would definitely say that I think the Time Shadow is probably the most powerful and advanced of the two uh, two Zords. And while, while the Falcon Zord is, is cool within some right, I just love all the different things that Time Shadow can go ahead and do. How fast it is, how powerful it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's just awesome. I don't know what else to, to really go ahead and say over to justify it. I think the Time Shadow is better than Falcon Zord. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and pick the uh, Time Shadow over the Falcon Zord in this round. And for our next matchup, we have the Sabertooth Tiger Dino Zord against Red Dragon Thunder Zord. And, again, two Mighty Morphin Zords. And I did, you know, the thing is, objectively speaking, I have said before, the Dino Zords are more powerful, more oppressive, and more diverse than the Thunder Zords. But that's as a collective whole. If there was one Thunder Zord that was far above the, the other Dino Zords, it would be the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. So as much as I like Trini, as much as I like Sabretooth Tiger, there's something about Red Dragon Thunder Zord that's just, again, it's it's mythical, it's cool, it's awesome. And again, you know, when you watch the Die Ranger footage, which I have, and definitely go ahead and pick it up when it comes out on DVD, um, Red Dragon Thunder Zord is just awesome. You see what it does in the series and how cool it is and all the things we kind of missed out on uh, because we weren't adapting a lot of that Sentai footage. It's just really, really cool. So Red Dragon Thunder Zord over Sabretooth Tiger. And to our final matchup, we have the Time Shadow versus Red Dragon Thunder Zord. So I've already shunned, uh, you know, the Falcon Zord for being, you know, inferior piece of technology to the Time Shadow. But this final matchup is not going to be about which is technologically superior. Because if I was basing it on that, it would definitely be the Time Shadow. Because again, cloaking device, flying, traveling back and forth to the future, all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, probably bear tech as well. 
But again, the Red Dragon Thunder Sword has that mythical quality to it. There is something uh, about it. It comes out of legend. You can see it rising from the mountains, descending from the sky, coming out of a, a lake, or going from the dark world into the light. You know, there are probably legends around it. It's something you would see painted in a cave the primitive natives saw that was scorching the sky and just, you know, everything. I, 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 you know, the thing is, when I went into this, I really didn't think I'd be loving the Red Dragon Thunder Zord this much. But when I sit down, because you know, I'm doing this on the fly, I make all these choices, and then I bracket them out. And, you know, when I think about Red Dragon Thunder Zord, is a really awesome Zord. It's really underrated, uh, I think. I mean, a lot of people like it, but I just don't see all this uh, reverence for it that I guess I'm giving it. Maybe I am the first person uh, to give it this type of reverence. I mean, I read a fanfic one time that compared the Red Dragon Thunder Zord to a Coke can, uh, <laughs> essentially, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, when I look at the two, and I, I tell you, and if I was to pick which is my favorite, which I would want to go ahead and pilot, which one I want by my side in battle, it's got to be the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. It is superior to the Tyrannosaurus Dino Zord. Uh, it, it's, you know, on par with the Tiger Zord, most likely. Um, but it is a great individual Zord. It's a great red mecha for either Sentai or Red Rangers. Jason was definitely worthy of having it. Rocky, not so much as worthy, in my opinion. Um... But again, for the, for my South Bracket, as part of my Final Five with the Dragon Zord and the SPD uh, Command Crawler, Red Dragon Thunder Zord is the winner. I know the